Those main heirs, Oryx, previously Orash, Savathun, previously Sathona, and Zaphi Arath, previously Zyro, are the hive leadership and have formed symbiosis with the worms from the planet Fundament. They worship the deep, which is the darkness, and continue a conquest to destroy the Traveller and the Sky, also known as the Light. They believe in order to reach the final form of the universe, they must destroy all imperfections and weaknesses. In addition, the symbiotic relationship they have established with the worms grants them immortality. However, they must continually feed their worm through bloodshed and conquest. As they become more powerful, their worm's hunger grows, creating a never-ending cycle. The Hive leadership have created separate throne worlds, different dimensions, and they return to this place with each death. The same knowledge and power used to create these throne worlds can be used to cut open portals to other dimensions, which is described as wounds throughout the Book of Sorrow text. Oryx has also gained the power to abduct his enemies and render them completely subservient, creating the Taken. Oryx was granted this ability after creating the Tablets of Ruin, which allows him to commune directly with the Deep. He gained this power by first killing his sisters, and through the power of sword logic was able to defeat the worm god Akka, and consequently discover the secrets of the Deep. To date, the Hive have destroyed the following named civilizations, amongst others. The Ammonites, the Quigu, the Dakoa, which are part of the Ecumene, which appears to be some sort of intergalactic organisation, and later, the entire extinction of the Ecumene. In order to keep this video as concise as possible, the remainder of the video is a summary of the Book of Sorrows verse 4, and any components that require greater analysis will have dedicated videos similar to that of Sword Logic and the Ahamkara content. Let's begin. Verse 4.0, A Golden Amputation, begins with yet another annihilation of a race. The race is called the Taishi Beth, who are also referred to as Sun Ravens. The Thai Emperor Raven has talons and feathers, similar to that of a typical raven, and appears extremely powerful. Regardless, her fate and the fate of her race is unchanged, and Oryx easily defeats the Emperor, swallowing her into a wound, only later to return her as taken. Without much further detail, the Taishi Beth are made extinct. With the extinction of yet another race, Oryx feels that he is on the threshold of truly communicating with the Deep, and in verse 4.1, he prepares an unborn ogre to act as a vessel and receive the Deep. Oryx is su successful in communicating with the Deep itself, however, whilst communing with the Deep, Oryx's sisters, Zafu Arath and Savathun, attempt to trap him and prevent his return to his throne by cutting off his tribute. Despite their efforts, Oryx returns from the deep and repays the favour to his sisters by crippling their tributes so they may never betray him again. In order to secure his lineage, Oryx finds a mother who is unnamed and a spawn is born, Crota, Eater of Hope. Crota is provided with a sword and a mission to pursue and destroy the Traveller for the false hope that it provides and deviation from the true final form of the universe. Oryx makes it clear that he has an oath to destroy the betrayer Taox, who still eludes him. However, this is not Crota's responsibility. On a side note, I received many questions regarding the Hive figure Nocris, the statue that can be found alongside Oryx and Crota on the Dreadnought. I've searched a number of times to discover who this Hive figure is, and as far as I am aware, there is nil mention of Nocris in any Grimoire cards or item descriptions. Considering the position of the statues, it would be reasonable to assume that it is the mother of Crota. However, there is no evidence for this apart from understanding that Crota did have a mother and the positioning of the statues. Crota is not the only child of Oryx. Oryx also created two daughters. Even if by accident, he cut a larva in half with his sword, Willbreaker, and the two halves did not die, but rather grew, creating the twin death singers. Ur Anuk and Ur Halak. Ur Halak created the Death Singer song and sings it in Zaifi Aras throne world, killing everyone who listened. The Death Singers also created the Oversoul, a technique of detaching their ascendant souls, which are then stored within the throne world. In the words of the Death Singers, this enhanced their resilience to death. 
In addition, it allowed them to make refinements to their death song, which perhaps explains how the death singers can sing the death song and not be killed themselves. This oversoul acts quite differently to the one we see in Crota's end raid, and I assume changes were made over time. Eager to learn from his sisters and encouraged by his father, Crota creates a portal. However, he was tricked by Savathun and encouraged to create a portal in a certain space, a space that Savathun knew would lead to the Vex. Upon creating the portal, the Vex poured through it, invading Oryx's throne world. This is the first instance of the Vex. We do not know where they originated from, however in Destiny's timeline this may be the first encounter. At first the Vex were severely disadvantaged within the throne world, however with the creation of the Vex mind, Korea Blade Transform. They deduce the sword logic. Verse 4.9, Korea says, I have to kill everything, Korea resolved, then I will be powerful. The Vex mind proceeds to kill 2,000 of Oryx's acolytes, and the Vex begin to establish power within Oryx's throne world. Crota calls for assistance from the Death Singers, and the two wizards create an annihilated totem that quickly destroys the Vex. However, Korea prevents the Hive from closing the portal, and the Vex continue to enter the throne world. Neither race can gain a foothold. In order to break the stalemate, Korea captures a worm larvae, and rather than introducing the larvae to the Vex mind fluid, she manufactures a priesthood and orders all sub minds to believe in worship. From this worship, they were able to gain a portion of power from the worms without symbiosis. This may be documentation of the creation of the Black Garden. However, I'll need to look into this further. This has all occurred whilst Oryx was absent, observing the deep destroy an ancient fortress world. However, the event did not go unnoticed, and the worm god Ea informs Oryx, saying, Set your house in order. Like an angry father returning to misbehaving children, Oryx returns to his throne world and instantly destroys the Vex reading from tablets of ruin, some of which he abducts, making them taken. Angry with Crota for his weakness, Oryx picks up Crota by the legs and tosses him through the Vex portal. He says, Come home glorious, or die forgotten. Crota proceeded to battle through the history, becoming a legendary demon. Whilst Oryx is preoccupied with the Vex, his sister, Zafi Arath, plans another ambush of his throne world. Predicting this, Oryx decides to move his throne world and says, I shall keep my glorious mind cosmos inside a titanic warship. In verse 4.11, Oryx creates the Dreadnought. For the first time, it mentions specific tools of the Hive Gods, the Hammer of Zafi Arath and the Scalpel of Zavathan. Oryx steals the hammer and the scalpel to create the Dreadnought. Once the physical ship was created, Oryx pushes his throne world inside it so that it leaks into the material space, into the Dreadnought. The Dreadnought and his throne world become one. The Dreadnought was within the throne of Oryx, but the throne of Oryx was the Dreadnought. With his throne world now safe, Oryx tracks a ship called the Nietzsche Thought Ship, thinking it may contain the Gift Mast, an object left by the Traveller when it fled, and something that Oryx is eager to consume. Oryx tracks the ship with the assistance of his daughters, however, it has been protected by a race known for their invincibility. So much so, they are named the Harmonious Flotilla Invincible. In their confidence, the Harmonious Flotilla Invincible surrounded the Dreadnought, unaware of the secret weapon, a design by the Death Singers. Oryx plunged his sword into the helm of the Dreadnought, and Oryx's throne world was pushed out into the material space. The clashing of the two worlds was devastating. The invincibility of the Harmonious Flotilla was tested, and the title of Invincible was removed from their name. Despite the victory, Oryx found that the Thought Ship did not contain the gift mast he so eagerly sought. But it was a trap, and inside was a Vex mind, Korea blade transform who appears to have not been so easily beaten at their first encounter. That brings us to the ending of the Book of Sorrows verse 4. My plan is to finish Book of Sorrows verse 5 prior to the challenge mode being released. That way we can have a look at the new calcified fragments with all the knowledge of previous verses. Once again, it has been a pleasure. This is Mylan Games. Peace.
I almost forgot. If you would like to support the video and can't think of a comment to say, you can link the phrase, it's a trap. <laughs> See you next time, guys.